Well, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending where you are joining us from. Welcome to our live launch coverage here on the launch pad of today's Proton M launch, launching from the Baikonur Cosmic Drome in Kazakhstan. We do still have a little bit of time until we're going to begin our full live launch commentary, but we did want to bring you a full live view uh, from Roscosmos uh, of the Proton rocket as it gets ready for its launch here this morning. Uh, currently, the rocket is uh, stationed out on the pad, uh, getting ready for its uh, tower support structure to be retracted back here uh, over the next about half an hour, uh, and then they will really start getting into that count in that last hour until liftoff. This is only the second Proton M launch we've seen of 2021. The, the last one actually is what launched the Nyoka module, that first of the two new modules up to the International Space Station. This is the 131st orbital launch attempt of any country in 2021 and the 13th launch from the Baikonur Cosmic Drone. But we're going to go into all the details uh, of the launch a little bit closer to liftoff, but we wanted to bring you, of course, a live view of the rocket as it gets ready for its liftoff here. If it's your first time here, welcome to the Launchpad. My name is Zach. I'm the host here at TLP, and our, it's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe space is better together, and we invite you to be active in the chat. Consider joining us over on Discord as well. We're hanging out in live comms, uh, doing a little bit of a pre-show in there as well until we get our full live commentary started here uh, and take a moment and check out our shop as we count down uh, the next little bit uh, if you use promo code launch day all one word all caps you do get 10% off I see only nine days left and that is until the launch uh, of James Webb everyone is counting down uh, until this very historic launch 10 billion dollar new satellite uh, replacing some of what Hubble can do uh, and opening our horizon into many new things as well we're super excited to um, be bringing that to you guys uh, as well we're going to be scheduling that live stream here a little later today you can join us for that at this point it's too late for us to guarantee you'll get your shirt in time but if you order it today there is excuse me there is still a possibility it can arrive just depending on how the shipping company goes and uh, if they want to be friendly to us or not so you can check that out but still makes a really great keepsake uh and celebration we actually know that some of the james webb team uh are picking up uh these shirts here so we're super excited for them to those that watch the channel thank you so much for supporting us and watching us uh we wish you guys all the best with this launch and we are uh 
holding our breath with you as we'll count down those about 30 days of deployment of 344 uh, different uh, points that need to go perfectly for deployment, but we're excited for that. Uh, great to see so many regulars joining in the chat. Julian, Humberto, Joe, Serona. Great to have you all here. If it's your first time here, take a moment, hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help us out. We're going to take a quick pause in our live commentary just as we uh, as they get the pad here ready. Uh, and then we'll resume our full live commentary in about 35 minutes from now. But if you guys have questions, you can send those in the chat and we will keep answering those as we count down towards the liftoff time here at uh, 7.10, I believe it is, just before 7.10 uh, Eastern time, uh, or, uh, 4.07, just double check the time here, 4.07 Pacific, so we got a little bit of time until that, but we hope that you will stay with us for now, shout out the broadcast, let people know this is getting started, and stay with us right here on the launch pad for our live launch coverage of Proton M, launching from the Baikonur Cosmic Drone, stay with us. Thank you. 
Well, good morning and everyone, good afternoon or good evening, depending where you're joining us from. Welcome here to the launch pad and our live launch coverage of today's Proton launch from the Baikonur Cosmic Drone in Kazakhstan. We are now at T minus 60 minutes and counting until liftoff here today. Uh, we're expecting Roscosmos to begin their official live feed uh, a little bit where we'll actually get an update on the rocket. But uh, these live views as that uh, tower rolls away from the Proton, leaving it out on the launch pad ready to go here. This is only the second Proton launch we've seen uh, in 2021. The last one was what launched the Nyoka module, but uh, as we get started with our full live launch commentary, take a moment, let us know in the chat where you're tuning in from. We're glad to welcome you all here. I know we got people tuning in all over the world for today's Express AMU-3 and AMU-7 launch, um, getting launched for the Russian Satellite Communication Company. Now today, though being broadcast by Roscosmos, uh, the launch provider is actually, and I'm going to say this wrong, is actually being done by the Krunichev State Research and Production Space Center. So not directly Roscosmos, but Roscosmos is bringing uh, the full live coverage of it. Today's launch complex is 200-39 from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Just two satellites on board today, weighing in at over 5,000 kilograms, or just over 11,000 pounds, going up into a geostationary low Earth orbit. Uh, they're expected to last about 15 years in orbit, going into slightly different positions. One will be going to 145 degrees of east longitude, uh, and the other 103 degrees of east longitude. Uh, and uh, each satellite weighs just slightly different, uh, but they will be uh, getting put into a st orbit today, uh, and then with their onboard uh, engines be moving into their final uh, launch positions. But we'll get into that a little bit more here in the next little bit. But we got Carl joining from Sweden, Robert in the UK, Gustin's in Argentina. We got Tweets in Cape Canaveral. We got uh, Hiko or Helco, sorry if I said that wrong, in Germany. Uh, great to have you all here. Thanks for tuning in. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name is Zach. I'm the host here at TLP and here at the Launchpad. It's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow. And we believe space is better together. That's why we bring full live coverage of every rocket launch we can. If there's a live view, we'll be live for it. Uh, and uh, we're working on getting launch cameras around the world as well. But we invite you to be active in the chat, asking questions, sharing comments and thoughts about what the launch is like from where you are. Are. consider joining us over on our discord as well it's totally free to do so we are hanging out over in uh, live com so you can join us there uh, during pre-shows and post shows as well as just hanging out in general uh, but if you'd like to help support what we do you can hit that join button or head over to patreon.com slash the launch pad starting at just $1.99 a month US uh, or under $2 in every currency you can help support what we do get access immediately to our behind the scenes uh, live streams uh, and things like that over on the discord and we appreciate your guys' support that way as we come down to T minus 56 minutes and counting until this proton rocket lifts off uh, from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. We've had a couple days off uh, with no launches, so we're excited to bring this one to you. Of course, we've got James Webb coming up on the 22nd. We've got uh, a couple Falcons coming up right before Christmas, one of which is a resupply mission to the ISS, so we hope you'll join us for all of those by hitting that subscribe button to get notified when we go live. We've got uh, Gibby's in, in Israel. we got Richard in Nevada. Carl's in Oregon. Uh, and we've got uh, J.A. over at Starbase. Good morning. Great to have you all here. Thanks for tuning in for today's launch. Uh, we saw a couple questions coming in a little bit before we got started here. We were answering them uh, through the chat uh, just as we were getting things uh, all spooled up for today. Uh, that the uh, the two crafts on board uh, are similar satellites, but are slightly different, uh, just in their weight based on what positionings they will be put into. I know lots of people talking about the uh, the debris field that Russia ultimately made with that ASAT test. Unfortunately, uh, that was a military test and is not something that Roscosmos or uh, the Russian Space Agency were really part of. They're having to deal with it just as much as everyone else is. So uh, it's something that uh, ultimately will be a factor for the coming years uh, but hopefully doesn't become too big of an issue uh, as time progresses along 
Uh, we are doing as, as a little bit of editing to the feed here to try to make it as clear as possible uh, as we uh, count down towards liftoff here at T-minus 54 minutes, 30 seconds in county. It is a hazier day uh, down at the Baikonur Cosmodrome here, uh, so hopefully we'll have some nice clear views uh, as we proceed through the count. Uh, as I was saying, this is only the second Proton launch that we have seen of this year, but the uh, Proton-M, which is what we're seeing launched today, is a heavy lift vehicle that first flew in 2001. Uh, it's capable of launching both civilian and military satellites, as well as cargo missions to the ISS, which is why we were able to see it launch that new module earlier this year uh, for it. But it was developed by the, and I'm saying it again wrong, the Khrushchev State Research uh, and Production Space Center. Uh, there's been very many variations of Proton over the years. Uh, and there have been over 400 proton launches in its lifetime so uh, a well-used uh, machine uh, compared to its ancestor the proton k the proton m has a new control system uh, that helps with power performance uh, but also improves its operational and environmental characteristics one of the big ones is it's more efficient and it actually ensures all of its fuel is used up uh, during the ascent so that when the rocket does crash into the steppes of Kazakhstan, uh, it is completely empty tanks, which helps prevent contamination uh, of that uh, local area or even possible uh, explosion uh, and hopefully makes it easier debris clean up as well. So you, Russia is looking at little things on how they can make things better, uh, but uh, nothing too crazy for uh, those of you that have watched Everyday Astronauts uh, Breakdown of all the Russian engines, just to give you an idea what's on board today. The first stage has six RD-276 engines, the burn time of 121 seconds. The second stage has three RD-0210 engines and one RD-0211 engines, with a burn time of 211 seconds. And the third stage has an RD-213 engine and an RD-214 engine with a burn time of 258 seconds. Uh, a little bit of details there on those engines. If you want to learn more about those, check out Everyday Astronauts Russia video. He breaks down all the engines. But we want to hear from you. Let us know your guys' live comments and questions in the chat. Just tag us at the launch pad. That helps make sure that we see those questions as they come in uh, and are able to answer those uh, as we uh, continue down through this count, coming down to T-minus 52 minutes and counting. Good morning, Gene in Ohio. Great to have you here. Joe's getting excited for James Webb. Yeah, it's uh, nine days and counting until she finally, hopefully, lifts off. Uh, and then we hold our breath for 30 days as we go through the 344 fail points from after getting to orbit to actually getting deployment uh, and uh, activation. So uh, it'll be a long month of January. We're debating on how much information possibly going to do daily James Webb updates. Uh, so stay tuned for that as well. Of course, our new live show is launching in January as well. Super excited uh, to introduce you to Ian and invite you all onto the launch podcast. Uh, our new live weekly show and audio podcast uh, launching in early January. Uh, Nico saying it's cloudy at Baikonur, huh? Are they going to scrub this or will it continue to launch? Uh, it is something they can launch through fog and, uh, you know, stuff like that isn't something they're too worried about. Also, if we're looking at the time of day uh, for it, it is getting into the middle of the afternoon. Uh, so it is possible that even just with their elevation, they're starting to see that, uh, that sun starting to set. Uh, on the horizon in the next couple of hours. So uh, it is something that's usual. You can see those lights starting to turn on uh, aimed at the launch site. So nothing to be worried about yet. Uh, also, we know the Soyuz uh, can launch pretty much in anything, as we've seen it even launch in a blizzard. That's kind of the joke of Soyuz is nothing stops it unless it's an Ariane space launch, and then they're worried about weather. But today's Proton M uh, will uh, will be hopefully having an update from Russ Cosmos here the next few minutes on their their commentary stream, which is all in Russian. Uh, we'll patch it in now and again, but we'll try to keep those live views of the rocket on as much as we can. 
you guys have a live comment or question, you can send that in over in the chat. Just tag us at the launch pad, and we'll be answering those. Uh, and glad to uh, answer those as we count down the last 49 minutes, 30 seconds until liftoff here. Looks like one of their cameras went off. Jay, congrats on the show. We also love the lights behind you on the rocket show. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Now we need to get a little festive. We're getting close to Christmas. Needed some lights. The Christmas tree I had didn't fit in this studio this year, but next year we will have our tree up uh, and uh, hopefully have some of our ornaments on there as well. But uh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. We really love the Studio 2.0 where we're releasing a full studio tour uh, with the launch of our new website. So you can stay tuned for that as well. Salty Sea Dog, what are the satellites they're launching today? They're launching uh, two satellites for the Russian Satellite Communication Company. And they're called the EK Express or Express AMU 3 and AMU 7. They are a commercial satellite manufactured by the Information Satellite Systems uh, Company, which is part of Roscosmos uh, and in partnership with the Talus L. Alania Space Italia uh, on a base of a middle class satellite bus, the Express 1000N. Uh, the main objective will be to uh, provide stationary and mobile communication services, digital television and radio broadcasting, high speed internet, and data communication in Russia and in cis countries. Uh, the modular design of this platform ensures parallel and independent manufacturing of satellites and buses so they can be unique depending on their deployment uh, situation. Uh, so that's what they're launching here today. Two satellites near similar identical uh but they do have slightly difference uh in their weight one weighing 2449 kilograms the other 2639 kilograms they're expected to last 15 years uh in their geostationary earth orbit um that uh, they'll be launching into uh here today they'll go into a deployment orbit and then they will move to their uh final orbits by themselves Joe Duolingo's paying off that signal said, that's an awesome idea, Joe. I've used it before, but I really should use that now for Russian uh, and a couple of the other languages. So you can, that's a good idea. Going into the new year, might have uh, given me another resolution. Good morning, Kevin from Ireland. Great to see you. Hello, fair grounds from Cornwall. Great to have you here as well. Ross Cosmos is uh, spooling up their live commentary feed, so we'll hopefully have an update here. Uh, shortly from them on that as well. We'll patch that in as that gets started. Take a moment, share out the broadcast, though. Let them know. TY is 45 minutes of counting until liftoff of today's Proton M rocket. We don't expect it to be uh, that long of a uh, launch and uh, deployment process uh, with Russia. They don't always cover it uh, if it's not uh, kind of instant, so we'll wait for an update to see how that uh, progresses uh, as the morning goes on. At least learn the acrylic. Yeah, absolutely. That is definitely a copy and paste straight into the translator. But uh, we're glad to have people all over the world. And you can send in those questions. And we would definitely try to do those. As we go, if you're just joining us, though, welcome. You're here for our live launch coverage of the Proton M rocket launching from the Baikonur Cosmodrome here today, uh, December 13th. And we're glad to have you all here uh, for this launch. If it's your first time here, hit that like, subscribe button. It really does help us out. See if we can get to that 100 like mark. Uh, and uh, yeah, keep sending in your guys' live comments and questions as we count down T minus 45 minutes, 30 seconds until liftoff.
And to those just joining us, welcome here to the launch pad and our live launch coverage of today's Proton M rocket launching out of the Baikonur Cosmodrome. We are at T minus 37 minutes and counting. I'm glad to have all of you here. If it's your first time here, hit that like, subscribe button. It does help us out. We want to hear from you in the chat. Who slash what will get the get a person to the moon next? You think it'll be SLS, Starship? Russia or China, let us know in the poll. Uh, we'll be glad to hear those. The first few votes coming in. Uh, and uh, currently, SLS is in the lead, Starship shortly behind. But 25% uh, of you think Russia or China could beat the United States uh, to the moon, which is quite interesting. Uh, and I think uh, it's definitely a possibility, depending how things go with Artemis. We're keeping a close eye uh, on the uh, Artemis timeline uh, as it goes from there. Pull missing China Russia cooperation. Yeah, I guess they are sort of working together in some ways for that that lunar base they're working on. But they do have different vehicles they're working on to get to the lunar surface. So that's why we split them up there. But uh, 
pick the one you think that would lead the way to getting to the lunar surface. Uh, seeing some more poles coming in. SLS and Starship jumping back and forth in the lead there, but China pulling up ahead in third place. So let us know in the poll. If you're watching on mobile, you'll see a blue bar in your chat. You can tap on that uh, and put that there uh, as well. Yeah, unfortunately, YouTube doesn't allow write-in options. I really wish they did. It's something that the, a lot of people have been asking for, so maybe next year we'll see it. Uh, YouTube's been working on some more live stream features, so we hope to have that, uh, you know, maybe as a feature coming in the future. We also are working on some other polling options that uh, we can use uh, for the future as well. So stay tuned for that in the new year. I have some new options thanks to some of our newer software. But if you're just joining us, welcome. You're here, T minus 35 minutes and counting until liftoff. Today's Proton M rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. You're looking at a live view of Launch Complex. 200 slash 39 where that proton m rocket is uh, out on the pad you can see a little bit of venting from the ground there uh it is snowing it is a, a snowy day down there in the, the kazakhstan as they count down to launch here today on board two communication satellites so they'll be launching into a geostationary uh orbit here today only the second proton launch of 2020 one, uh, the first one launched the Nyoka module uh, just a few months ago uh, to the International Space Station. Jim, welcome to be a VIP spectator. Thank you so much for supporting us in that way. I really do appreciate you uh, supporting us there. If you're over on the Discord, if you can just send a mar message to Marcus or myself, uh, we can upgrade you uh, on the Discord to make sure that you can see uh, those behind the scenes accesses that you get now as a VIP spectator. So thank you so much. For those wondering what VIP Spectator means, that's our first tier uh, as a YouTube member that you can become. Uh, and that gives you access to behind the scenes, early video access, different things like that, depending on the tiers. Uh, but uh, we believe everyone's a spectator. That's why uh, everyone gets that. But if you do support us uh, financially on a month to month, you can go VIP Spectator. Uh, and then in the higher tiers, you actually become part of our crew. Uh, it goes all the way up to free shirts every few months. We bought a bomber jacket direct access possible on air time uh, and things like that so definitely check those out hit the join button or check over on patreon uh, we're excited to have some more stuff coming for you guys in 2022 as well herb good morning from ontario great to see you here who else is watching over starlink i wish that's pretty cool though if you are if you're just joining us, let us know where you're tuning in from. If you have a question, you can send that in. Just tag us at the launch pad, and we'll be able to answer those questions live as we count down the last 33 minutes until liftoff here. You'll see the camera kind of changing some of its contrast and views uh, throughout the morning. That's actually us trying to make sure we get as clear of a video uh, as possible uh, to be able to have that view here. Right now, the original view is a little blurrier uh, for it. Russ Cosmos is showing a bit of a breakdown of their rocket here on their other feed, so we're going to pull that in here. Breakdown of the engines that are on board today's flight. And a breakdown of those SRBs in the first, second, and third stages. Salty Sea Dog, thank you so much for becoming a civilian astronaut. I appreciate that so much i know i saw you jump in the uh in the discord there a little bit ago so i'm just gonna go right here we're gonna go manage we're gonna update that role for you and there you go you are updating you can see those uh extra tiers there so thank you so much if you guys' names aren't the same here on youtube as they are in discord just let us know in a message uh and we'll be able to verify uh, that that's you and get you that access. But thank you so much, uh, Salty Sea Dog. Welcome to our crew. I really appreciate that. Matthew, Florida, great. Thanks for watching, man. Uh, do you know how many launch pads they have at the Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan? That's a great question. I don't right off the bat, but let me double check that. There is a, a there is quite a few. Um, I 
Let me let me try to work on that uh, that uh, question there uh, for you as we. It depends on which rocket you're talking about on how many it actually has. Uh, they did because they did some of their N one testing there, uh, so it has had quite a few pads uh, in its history. Let's check here. We are, oh my, quite a few. Uh, a quick count. A uh, rough count, 79. Uh, that's a, a rough count of how many are at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Now, not all of those uh, still exist. A number were destroyed in explosions in the 60s uh, during the, some of the testing there. Some were retired during the 60s, some of the 70s. Uh, so there, there are launch sites that do not exist anymore. But in its lifetime, it has had 79 different pads. Uh, and it did have the Baran facilities as well. And that has that full Baikonur runway and actually an airport uh, as well to support it. Uh, so they are they're working on different things there. And they are still working uh, on uh, making new complexes at the Baikonur Cosmodrome as well. And there is actually a Baikonur Museum. So it is quite a, quite a facility. Uh, maybe one day we'll be able to visit that in person. But that's a great question. I wouldn't have thought of that. So I appreciate uh, you sending that in. Taking a look over at our poll, over 70 votes in, 26% think SLS will get the first person or the next person to the moon, 44% think Starship, really interesting, 23% think China, very close to SLS, and 7% down to Russia. So I have to, definitely some optimism for Starship, but uh, I have to believe along with you, I, I, I'm thinking Starship is going to be the one that lands someone next on uh, for it. I'll work on the currently have Matthew uh, probably post stream just because there's not a clear number that's showing up. But uh, I, it, it's looking like at least 20 or 30 that are still technically listed. So, but yeah, a lot of pads in its history. Uh, there's a number of pads that are like small pads that maybe aren't used frequently but are there. Uh, that could be for small rockets, suborbital rockets, different things like that. Uh, so, uh, and then there's some other pads that are inactive, but aren't retired. So like pad 250 has been inact inactive since 1987 with the Energia rocket, uh, but is still technically there. So, uh, some different things, a field trip. That would be amazing. Uh, yeah. Take a little bit of work to get into Russia, but Hey, one day that'd be pretty, uh, pretty sweet. Be excited for that. If you're just joining us, though, welcome here to the launch pad, our live coverage of the Proton M rocket launch. We are currently sitting T minus 27 minutes and counting until liftoff, carrying two communication satellites into a geostationary orbit here uh, today, uh, launching out of the Baikonur Cosmodrome from Launch Complex 200 slash 39. Uh, Roscosmos uh, with their typical live view interviewing a few different random people. Unfortunately, it is all in Russian, uh, so we're not able to patch like we can patch it in, but we wouldn't know what they're saying. So uh, we're keeping the live views out on the pad. Uh, the rocket rolled out uh, over 24 hours ago uh, horizontally, was then tipped up. And then if you've been live with us for the last uh, kind of hour, hour and a bit, you saw that large support structure uh, roll away actually right towards the camera. The full tower retracted back, relieving just the rocket and its uh, small support kind of straw back in place. Joe, you need a lot of launch pads when you're using hypergolics. Absolutely. Matthew, you figure you might know since your channel's launch pad. It's true. It's true. That is the name of our Nate channel. Uh, definitely a good question. And uh, definitely we'll have that for the future. 
If you're just joining us, though, take a moment. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Hit that like and subscribe button. It does help us out as well. We are on the road to 15K by the end of the year. We can only do that thanks to your guys' support. We try not to mention it too often, but if you want to head on over to our shop while we count down the last 25 minutes or so here, you can use promo code LAUNCHDAY, all caps, one word, get 10% off everything on our shop. We also have our James Webb uh, merch and our holiday merch currently sitting at 10% off uh, in the shop, so you can uh, pick those up. We're not guaranteeing Christmas delivery at this point, but depending where you're located, it might be possible if you order here today or tomorrow, but uh, isn't a guarantee anymore at this point. Uh, but we still appreciate your guys' support in that way. That's a great way to pick up a little merch and uh, wear into the new year celebrating James Webb. As, uh, it'll be a month-long deployment through January. Again, we wanted to mention, as we said earlier, to the James Webb team, we're cheering on with you, holding our breath with you. Uh, and thanks to a number of you on the team that have uh, actually picked up our James Webb shirts. Uh, we're cheering you on and uh, appreciate you wearing uh, choosing to wear our shirts on your launch day. Uh, that's really cool. Watching from bed, Kevin, that sounds like a great place to watch from. I wish I could do that, but you guys want to see me in the studio, and it's, it, w it wouldn't be as good. We thought about it, but uh, it wouldn't be uh, as good. Joe's expecting his merch any day. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll have to, I can double check uh, on that. Uh, that order there but uh, we've been getting things turned out pretty quickly here uh, i uh, hope that you guys will uh enjoy them they're all an ultra lightweight shirts so they are really light uh and if you hold them up to light you can see through them a little bit but it's nice they're really comfortable really light and they wash really well the prints hold really well as well so we uh hope that uh they're nice layerable depending where you're wa uh wearing them but if you're wearing them down to like florida in the heat You'll be comfortable even in a black shirt. So I uh, appreciate your guys' uh, support. And if you guys ever have merch ideas, we love hearing those over on Discord as well. There's a section in there, Shop Hangout. Send in your ideas. We've had a few ideas straight from the Discord go on to the shop, and we appreciate your guys' uh, idea there. Taking a look at the poll, Starship still holding that lead, but SLS and China close together, 26 and 22%, and uh, Russia sitting in the back there. Coming down to 23 minutes, 20 seconds and counting until liftoff here. Uh, you can still see a little bit of that snow uh, and that haze just in the air as we come down to that uh, launch time. Uh, nothing you'll be ultimately too, too worried about as we count down towards uh, liftoff here later today.
Oh my goodness, uh, J.A., thank you so much for that super chat there. Uh, not even a message with it. I uh, appreciate that. Just a, a very excited jumping. I think that's a lemon. I think that's a lemon. But uh, thank you so much. I appreciate that so much for your support, uh, your continued support. You've been amazing. Uh, it was great connecting with you down at Starbase and then having you as part of our community. So thank you so so much that helps going into us being able to budget to know what we're able to do uh in the coming months uh and being able to make sure that we can get our crews down to starbase for those important launches and uh to florida as well so thank you so so much uh people in the chat but thank you there to ja that's uh, amazing thanks for the morning wake up catch on the flip side perhaps a booster lifting here's hoping who here's hoping booster four uh, maybe getting lifted uh, following our launch here today. So we'll have to wait and see. But thank you so much for that. If you're just joining us, we're at T minus 19 minutes, 30 seconds and counting until liftoff of the Proton rocket from Kazakhstan. Uh, weather's looking decent, a little bit of snow in the region, but uh, everything progressing towards an on time liftoff here today. If you guys have questions, you can send that in the chat. Tag us at the launch pad, and we'll be answering those as we count down until liftoff. I'm going to take a super quick commentary break here and i will be right back but stay with us right here on the launch pad for our live launch coverage of proton m from kazakhstan
to those just joining us. Welcome here to the launch pad and our live launch coverage of today's Proton M rocket. We are T minus 12 minutes and counting until liftoff here today. And uh, uh, I like the comment uh, from Dane there. Do they know their caravan is zoomed into the max? Uh, we were talking about this a little on the Discord. Uh, it's like he's not even zoomed into the point we can see the whole boosters on the side. He's just zoomed in to the max. So hopefully we'll get uh, a couple wide shots here for the actual liftoff. We do have uh, also the uh, the split view of the uh, official live uh, commentary view from Roscosmos uh, with their hosts. Uh, but uh, in typical Roscosmos weather, they've got the live view of the very smallest box uh, while they show some promo videos. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that, go live to that uh, as they go to their launch sequence, as that'll have the live telemetry on board. Uh, so we are watching that uh, closely here. But uh, glad to have it. Salty, so, is there any way to make the video full screen and still have the chat visible on a PC? Unfortunately not. The easiest way would be to do um, theater mode or a second monitor or a, uh, a phone. Uh, and do it uh, that way. You can, yeah, you can do the pop out chat, but I don't. You know, the pop out chat won't overlay onto a uh, actual. Uh, like if you went full screen, you wouldn't be able to see the pop out. Unfortunately, uh, I know on mobile they have the ability. Like if you're full screen, you can see the live chat, but not on PC desktop. Unfortunately, the limits of YouTube sometimes. Uh, I know that's what I personally normally do is have it full screen and then have it on like another device or something, but uh, it's interesting there. Coming down T minus 10 minutes and counting until lift off of the Proton M rocket. And we're hoping that the, the camera views will uh, stay clear with us here. So we count down those, uh, those last uh, 10 minutes as it does start to get uh, a little bit darker down uh, at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. We are adjusting that live view uh, a little bit, updating, upping the uh, the contrast to the gamma uh, to keep it just a little bit brighter than it actually is. <laughs> hey, the cameraman woke up. No, I think they, they just the camera switcher woke up, uh, so that's uh, that is there. If you're just joining us, though, take a moment. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, glad to welcome you here. If it's your first time here, hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, we appreciate that. On the road to 15K by the end of the year. We can only do that thanks to your guys' support. I want to thank again our uh, new... Ooh, why didn't Siri turn on? I uh, want to thank again our new members uh, that uh, joined today, as well as JA for that very generous super chat. Thank you for supporting us in the way uh, that you guys are. You're making the launch pad possible. Hey, Cooper, good to see you. Uh, we want to hear from you guys in the poll. 150 votes in so far. Who and what will get the next person to the moon? SLS, Starship, Russia, or China. Uh, Starship holding 48%. SLS at 24%. China holding 20% and Russia at 7%. So lots of people feeling Starship. But SLS and China, uh, pretty close there. Let us know your thoughts. Totally free to answer that uh, poll there. If you're on a mobile device, just click the little blue bar that you'll see in your live chat. Uh, and that uh, will open up that poll for you. Tap it again and it'll minimize it away so you can enjoy the launch take a moment share the broadcast out let people know we are t-minus eight minutes and counting until liftoff everything we've heard from ross cosmos is that the count is progressing well towards today's liftoff so let's do a quick rundown again of today's mission today is the express amu3 and amu7 satellite launch those are the two communication satellites on board today's proton m rocket the view on your screen right now is a live view of the Launch Complex 200-39 of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Today's payload weighing just over 5,000 kilograms or 11,000 pounds going into geostationary orbit. Of course, Proton, like most of and all of Russia's rockets, are not recoverable or reusable. So the uh, uh, first stage will crash into the steps of Kazakhstan. But the Proton M is an upgraded version of the Proton that uh, does make sure that it uses all of its fuel in that first stage to help reduce any damage or impacts when it does crash down. 
second Proton M launch of 2021, the 131st orbital launch of 2021 of any space agencies. And that number's uh, ticking higher. We may even reach into the 140s uh, just before the end of the year, uh, possibly setting a, a slightly new record as we start seeing a lot more flights. Uh, and we're expecting next year to beat that for sure. Uh, that does not include all the suborbital flights we have seen this year on board, the two communication satellites will help provide uh, stationary and mobile communication services, digital television and radio broadcasting, high-speed internet and data communication in Russia and CIS countries. Uh, and it's a modular design platform, uh, which is used as parallel and independent manufacturing and testing of both the satellite and the uh, bus on the uh, satellites as well but we're coming down t minus six minutes and counting until liftoff you can send in any last minute questions in the chat and we'll be able to answer those we got people tuning in all over the world let's see who's here we got hd garbage is in missouri cooper's in florida Kristoff in belgium we got doc in fort wayne indiana we got uh Mergrill, Mer 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 so i'm saying that wrong Pennsylvania, I think. PL? Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Dane, I'm currently watching from my desk at Kennedy Space Center, Florida, across from the VAB. That is so cool. Uh, that is a really cool place to be watching us. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're still doing your work too. But uh, thanks for watching. I uh, appreciate having your guys' support there at Kennedy Space Center. Uh, Eric's in Michigan. We got Kevin in California. We got Mon in New Hampshire. We got Frank in California. Prismo Beach. We got James in Ireland. David's in South Africa and Cape Town. Great to have you all here. We got Tennessee. Uh, lots of people here in the chat. We're glad to have you all here as we count down these last five minutes until liftoff. Working on a paper model Proton M. That's awesome. Augustine's in Pennsylvania. Thanks so much here. If you guys have questions, you can send those in. We'll answer those either counting up to launch uh, or we'll answer those following the uh, launch sequence here as we count down those last five minutes. If you're just joining us, take a moment, hit like and subscribe. It really does help us out. And uh, following liftoff, consider taking a look over at the TLP shop. It is launch day, which means promo code launch game gets you 10% off everything in the shop. But we also do have some sales on right now on our James Webb stuff, as well as our holiday collection. So you can take a look at those as well. We'll drop all those links uh, in the chat for you. As we count down the last four minutes here until liftoff. see those lights starting to come on the Baikonur Cosmodrome getting ready for liftoff here this morning green from st. Louis Missouri I do not speak Russian unfortunately but I'm good with a Google Translate hello from the Philippines hey Justin good to see you JB's in Oregon. Great to see you as well. Take a moment, share out the broadcast. Let people know that uh, we are just minutes away from a launch here from the Baikonur Cosmodrome, carrying two new communication satellites into orbit. Hoping for a, a nice, clean launch here this morning here at the launch pad. Our mission is to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow. We believe space is better together. That's why we cheer on all the rocket launches, big and small. Uh, whether we fully agree with the governments of those rocket launches or not, uh, we believe that it's all helping push us towards being a multi-planetary species uh, and appreciate that. As we come down here, last three minutes, we want to, uh, we've been teasing a new series we're launching in the new year of interviews called Behind the Console. So uh, if you work at NASA or Kennedy or SpaceX, Roscosmos, any of those agencies, uh, in any position, we want to hear from you. Send us a message on Twitter, uh, privately or on Discord. Uh, we can connect and see if maybe you'd consider doing a small interview. Obviously, lots of things you can't talk about, but we want to know who the real people are that are sitting there every day behind the desk, maybe as an engineer, maybe as comms director, maybe a marketing person. There are thousands of jobs that are unsung heroes that are helping push us to be a multi-planetary species. And starting in 2022, we want to shine a light on you. So if you're working into the industry in any way, get in contact 
talked with us. Interviews, five, 15 minutes long. Uh, we just want to get to know and uh, thank you for what you're doing and shine a little bit of light on you as we want to be full team space. Coming down, T-minus two minutes and counting, as always here on the launch pad. We want to hear from you in the chat. Let's see a go, no go for launch uh, in that chat. But uh, we are uh, counting down these final minutes here uh, until liftoff. Camera's adjusting as uh, gets a little bit darker. They're launching just at the sunset time there. Thanks, Christoph. Appreciate it. Right, just double check. The audio should be on here. Turn it up just a little bit as we count down to the launch. We will patch in the uh, live feed with the telemetry as well uh, and go from there. <laughs> Nerd or not, one day there will be a launch day discount every day. We've had some weeks that have been pretty close there uh, for it, so absolutely. Ooh, it's getting dark. Turn the lights on. We want to see coming down T minus 60 seconds and counting. Patching in the auto, T minus 20 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Should see ignition. There it is. And liftoff of Proton M from the Bike Rock Cosmos. Look at that shot. Wow. that live telemetry we're seeing on your screen now to show us the stages obviously with the current lighting condition not something that we're having a long view of the rocket so we will be relying on the animation but you can see they're already 10 kilometers into altitude traveling 1700 kilometers an hour uh, first uh, moment expected two minutes into flight so we've got a little bit there but a nice quick clean lift off there uh, from it Appreciate that, Joe. Don't need a promo code if you intend to support the channel. That's true. Buy on the days we don't have the promos. We'll have that proton separation coming up in uh, about 30 seconds from now. Passing 30 kilometers in altitude, 4,800 kilometers an hour. About 15 seconds from first stage separation. Fortunately, probably no live views, but we'll see. Stand by for first stage separation. There's first stage set. And second stage ignition. 50 kilometers in altitude, passing through 6,700 kilometers an hour. Uh, going up to 26,000 kilometers an hour is the targeted speed at 170 kilometers in altitude. Next up, we'll have second stage separation uh, in uh, about uh, a couple more minutes from now, about two th minutes or so from now. Take a moment, hit that like button, it really does help us out. If it's your first time here, subscribe as well. 
passing 70 kilometers in altitude, 7,800 kilometers an hour in speed. There were six boosters on board, uh, but they don't separate actually from the first stage. They're attached there. So all that first stage will crash into the steps of Kazakhstan here a little bit later, but with the Proton M, it makes sure it drains all that fuel, burns it completely before that stage separation. Yeah, they do have a really nice uh, an animation there. Very uh, reminiscent of Kerbal Space Program with some of these flybys. Passing 85 kilometers in altitude over 9,000 kilometers an hour. About 90 seconds away from that second stage separation. Which will shortly be followed by, I believe, the fairing separation as well. Just passing through 10,000 kilometers an hour, coming up to that 100 kilometer uh, altitude range. Coming about 60 seconds away from second stage separation. Coming up to 12,000 kilometers an hour, almost half of the speed that it will be going once it gets into its full orbit. Like to see a first stage impact? Yeah, it'd be interesting to see, Carl. Absolutely. Uh, if you go on Twitter, you can sometimes see pictures of the remains of the, the crash site, uh, but uh, pretty rare to see a video of it crashing, though. 13,000 kilometers an hour, officially passed through half of its speed that its target go uh, for orbit, uh, passing through 117 kilometers in altitude, about 30 seconds away from second stage separation. We do some KSB, but we do it mostly on Discord now. We used to do it on this channel itself, but uh, we've got so many people that are here for the space news and launches, we don't want to make it too messy, so we do that mostly on Discord. Coming up about 15 seconds from second stage separation. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And second stage cutoff and separation. Third stage ignition. We'll have fairing separation in about 15 seconds here. Five, four, three. Two, one. We have fairing separation. And that third stage main engine cutoff now, uh, coming up about four minutes from now. But you can see those two satellites now stacked on top of that booster. Or on top of that rocket, on top of that third stage now. Uh, and they will have uh, separate deployments uh, into one orbit, and then with their onboard engines will maneuver themselves into their finalized orbit. Zach ain't afraid to bust out some KSP. We've done it before. If we have a delay and we have nothing to look at, we'll uh, we'll pull it out. But uh, we don't do too many Kerbal streams dedicated anymore. Uh, but it uh, doesn't mean they won't be back sometimes in the future, so stay tuned for that. But if you're in the Discord, we're normally in there pretty much every night playing some sort of Kerbal, Minecraft, GeoGuessr, or something like that uh, as a community, and sometimes flying here, guys, as craft. Coming up to seven minutes into flight, passing 150 kilometers in altitude, over 18,000 kilometers an hour. Two thirds of the way to its top speed from launch here. Two minutes until we see that second stage separation. Or 
Oh, and we're getting reports that BN4 is moving as well. So we're going to take a look at that. See what uh, see what the booster's doing. Be fitting that they move it right when there's a launch. Pretty pitch black. Hard to see anything down there at Starbase right now. Coming up uh, about uh, 60 seconds away from that third stage main engine cutoff. No sleep, Kevin. No sleep. Nope. Coming up about 15 seconds away from that main engine cutoff here. This will be the third stage is cut off. Five, four, three, two, one. And there's third stage cutoff and separation. 171 kilometers in altitude, 26,000 kilometers an hour. Uh, they've hit both their targets there, and that uh, is in orbit. The orbital block separation occurred, and those two satellites are on their way. Keep a live view here, see what uh, any updates that they give us. But uh, they'll probably wrap it up with uh, that uh, pretty, well, pretty traditional Roscosmos fashion. Uh, they're in orbit, and uh, that's all that they're going to show us. So we're going to keep an eye on that uh, as uh, we're not seeing any more data coming in uh, from their technical feed. So uh, that's probably going to do it for us here today. A, a nice quick one. Uh, their launch uh, up into orbit uh, is complete, and uh, we do have uh, some pictures of the empty pad here uh, that we can uh, conclude with. Uh, as we wrap up uh, our live coverage of today's launch of that Proton M, two more satellites up on their way to orbit. We're going to quickly wrap this one up, get ready for our live Starbase coverage as we await the lift of Booster 4. The lift hasn't begun yet, but it looks like it will be beginning shortly. So we hope you'll join us for that. If it's your first time here, hit that like, subscribe button so you never miss another live launch coverage, exclusive interview, space news updates, and more. We got some space news updates coming for you very soon about the future of the FA Astronaut Commercial Wings program. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But that's going to do it for us here this morning for our live coverage of today's Proton M launch here at the launch pad. It's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow. And we believe that space is better together. And we invite you to be active in the chat. Join us on Discord. Uh, check out our shop. All the links are in the description. But that's going to do it for us uh, for our first of two streams here this morning. This is Zach with the Launchpad signing off. I'll see you soon for our Starbase live coverage. Stay with us.